Howdy folks, welcome back to Boondockery. Today I'm going to show you how to make gelled alcohol fuel that you can use as an option for your solid fuel stoves. Now I personally love solid fuel stoves. A lot of people don't really care for them. Number one reason they don't like them, solid fuel stinks, smells awful, and it emits a lot of harmful vapors when it's burning. I can completely appreciate that. The idea of being stuck in a tent wanting to heat up some food and it's pouring down rain, you have no option whatsoever to get outside of the tent to cook, but your only option to heat your food is being enclosed in a tent with solid fuel tabs. It's like being in a gas chamber. <laughs> it's horrible. So I, I can appreciate why a lot of people do not like solid fuel stoves. Me personally, um, I really like them. And one of the reasons I like them is because you have a huge variety of manufacturers of solid fuel tabs. There are ways that you can make your own solid fuels. And the idea that if you have an optional fuel source other than a solid fuel tab that can fit in relatively the same amount of space that the solid fuel tab occupies, well, you have options there. This little uh, rectangular Esbic cook set I bought several years ago, I absolutely love this thing. The actual stove section is pretty large and you are supposed to use an extra large um, fuel tab in here or you can use two of the regular ones to spread that heat out a little bit. Um, however, I found that I can use things like gelled sterno in an Altoids tent and it works absolutely fantastic because solid fuel, no matter what kind of solid fuel you get or how you space it out, you're either going to have one hot spot in the middle of the bottom of your stove or you're going to have two or three hot spots if you break that tab up. It doesn't create an even cooking surface so you can't really cook with it. The best you can do is hope for boiling water to put in a freeze-dried mill or make a cup of coffee. With the gelled sterno, I can actually cook with this because sterno is not really designed to boil water quickly. It's designed to get water good and hot in order to warm up other things in trays you put in, these things that you find in catered dinners and uh, caterers use them for their buffets. However, it works fantastic for actually cooking because you are creating a medium heat that doesn't create a hot spot. So you can do things like fry eggs, bacon. Uh, I've cooked a lot of different things. I've grilled hamburgers. I've done a lot of different things with the stove because of the convenience of having that optional fuel source. Well, the gelled alcohol fuel I'm going to teach you how to make today, well, that's the berries because it will actually get to decent heat to where you can boil with it. But if you use it in sparing amounts, spread it out nice and thin, well, you have a much lower reduced temperature in order to actually cook with your cook set. I'm going to go ahead and do a real quick demo of a gel um, alcohol fuel that I made over three years ago, and it's still ever bit as effective as it was the day I made it. Well, here it is, folks. This is the same container that I put this in excess of three years ago. It has a rubberized seal, but it's plastic. Ideally, I probably should have used a mason jar, which the batch I'm making today, that's what we're going to use to store it in. It would be, a, I, I think, a more effective container. But this one has done very, very well. As you can see, it looks sort of like slushy snow. And um, some of the alcohol has sweat out of the gelled mixture. But a little bit of agitation 
you can blend a lot of that right back in there so you don't have the standing puddles and the material that causes the, ge the gelling effect with the denatured alcohol is calcium acetate and calcium acetate can be made right at home with old uh, empty eggshells all you do is you get a whole bunch of uh, eggshells saved up from making your scrambled eggs in the morning or fried eggs and you dry them out and you use a mortar and pestle and you grind that into a fine powder now I took the easy way out and I ordered a bottle of calcium nitrate and oh excuse me calcium acetate and I have enough calcium acetate with the one jar that I have to probably make uh, I would say maybe 20, 20 of these containers very easily. Before I show you how to actually make this stuff, I'm going to do a real quick demo so you can see how it works. Let's put the Altoid 10 right there as my burner. And I'm just going to put one tablespoon of my gelled fuel right there and I'm going to light that on fire. I'm going to douse some of these lights. Now you can see how it's burning. The calcium acetate solution binds the alcohol in a way that it creates a wicking situation very similar to the, the way perlite uh, can do the same thing uh, the previous video I posted um, I went over how to make a uh, perlite alcohol burner for your solid fuel stoves and this has a very similar manner in which it burns However, because the alcohol itself is trapped in the gel, as the gel gradually burns away and allows that wicking action to pull the, uh, the alcohol to the surface, it doesn't burn with quite the intensity. If you remember in that video, the perlite burner was almost a perfectly blue flame, very, very hot. You'll notice that there is more of an orange flame with this, and there is a good bit of blue as well. However, this doesn't burn quite as hot. If I were to use just a little bit less of the gel and smoothed it out evenly across the bottom of the Altoids 10 and lit it, it would have a much more even um, flame to it and would make it more conducive to actually cooking with your solid fuel cook set as opposed to just boiling water. This will burn, one tablespoon of this will burn for a very long time. We'll do a burnout uh, test later on in the video and, and a boil test so that way you can see just how long one of the tablespoons will actually do its job and for the amount that you can make per recipe <laughs> is absolutely a huge amount it will last a very long time and it's incredibly inexpensive to produce now what you're going to need to make your own gelled alcohol fuel is you'll need alcohol i'm using denatured alcohol you're going to have to have some calcium acetate you need distilled water, it has to be distilled. You need to have a container to put your solution in and mix your solution. And if it's a large enough container, you can just go ahead and create your uh, gelled alcohol fuel in the same container, or you can have another container for it. You need to have a half cup measuring cup, quarter cup measuring cup, and a tablespoon measuring spoon. 
The first thing we need to do is we need to make a calcium acetate solution. And you're going to do so by dissolving one quarter cup of calcium acetate into one half cup of warm distilled water. And you need to do this and to a container. You can make smaller batches of this and just by uh, pre-mixing your solution uh, you can measure out the amount that you want in order to make as many different batches as you want but you want to have a container you can keep your solution in so we're just going to go ahead and put this quarter cup of calcium acetate into our warm distilled water. Should have used a wide mouth jar. Now get the rest of this stuff in here. And we're going to go ahead and put the lid on that. We're going to shake that around until all the calcium acetate is dissolved. Now our solution is completely dissolved and mixed. And what we're going to do, we're going to measure out one quarter cup of alcohol. And we're going to use one tablespoon of the solution. And I'm going to bring the camera in closer so you can see the immediate reaction. There's one tablespoon of the solution. Now it has immediately started to create this bubbly sort of mixture. And it is already beginning to solidify. Now we're going to blend this around. Try to get as much of that calcium acetate solution into the alcohol and it literally does feel like slush it looks like slush it feels like slush and unlike the uh, old batch that I had this almost has a clear gelatin type of appearance when you have it completely incorporated it almost, you know, looks like a, an icy sort of solution. But we're going to go ahead and continue to agitate that for just a few minutes. And then we'll be ready to do a test bar. Now I blended the solution in with the alcohol fairly thoroughly. And then I set it aside. It's been about five, ten minutes. And the amount of liquid alcohol that's still not combined with the, the gelled mixture is minuscule right now compared to what it was when I was first starting to break up the uh, solution uh, nuggets to blend in with the rest of the alcohol. I'm going to repeat this process multiple times so that I can fill a one pint or excuse me one quart mason jar that way i have enough gelled alcohol fuel to last me many many years this is what it looks like in the bottom of the mason jar <laughs> i can't get over how much this reminds me of wet snow i'm going to do a 
time-lapsed uh, burnout of one tablespoon of the gelled alcohol fuel. Now, one tablespoon right there. And we will light that. The actual burnout time was 16 minutes, 32.27 seconds. The last six minutes of the, the gel fuel burning was pretty ineffective, but it still continued to burn for a long period of time. And um, when it's completely burned out like this, uh, you can see it's got this little crust on it, but when you break it up, oh, there's still it's still pasty. There's still alcohol there. I bet you that will still burn. Um, but when it's completely burned out, you will have nothing but pure powdered calcium acetate. Yeah, it's still burning. But with that degree of ineffective burn time, I just blopped it on there, lit it, and timed it. As you notice the flame intensity weakening, remove your cook pots where you can access the uh, gel. Just take a stick or something and agitate it just a little bit, and then that flame will increase. And the burn time will be shorter, but that's okay. You have an effective flame. But we had an effective flame on this for at least 10 minutes. And um, like I said, when this is completely burned out, and like I said, it's still sort of pasty there in the bottom, and it is burning right now. I don't know if the camera can see it or not. But when it's completely burned out, when you bust it up, it is nothing but powdered calcium acetate. Now we're going to do a test boil. We're going to do a time lapse on that. Got 12 ounces of water in there. We'll start off with one tablespoon. I stopped it at 10 minutes because at 10 minutes the flame pretty much becomes uh, ineffective. And like I said, you could very easily go in and agitate a little bit to get more of that uh, flame coming out. And that's going to get it. But if you notice, you saw it almost come to a boil. And that is what I was looking for when I used the gelled sterno to use with this stove set, this cook set, is because I didn't want to have that high of a temperature. I wanted to have a lower temperature that I can actually cook with. So between this gelled alcohol and the perlite that I demonstrated uh, the last video, uh, I have both options that burn super super clean no residue on the bottom of the cook pot very inexpensive very easy to use very lightweight very compact and i do not have to use fuel tabs if i do not want to either the perlite 
alcohol stove or this gelled alcohol. Either way it goes, I can use this inside a tent if I got stuck in the rain. Well, I finished up all the solution that I made of the uh, calcium acetate and distilled water. And this is the amount of gelled alcohol fuel I was able to make. A little bit, I'd say a little bit more than two-thirds of a quart. And as you can see, it is quite <laughs> solidified. This is really good. It has a good uh, uh, pliable consistency. So don't let this so solid-looking mass fool you. You can scoop it right out with no problem. I transferred the gelled alcohol fuel that I made three plus years ago into this mason jar and as you can see it's it's pretty liquidy so after a period of time that gelatinous nature breaks down a little bit um, I'm gonna, I just put this in here so I'm going to see if uh, it will settle and get more gelatinous uh, over time but just I, I've used this <laughs> and I probably made a little bit bigger batch but this will last a good long time just one batch so you don't have to go all crazy and buy yourself a great big old honking jar of calcium acetate like I did but who knows this right here that could be a wonderful Christmas gift or a birthday gift for one of my uh, friends that are really into uh, bushcrafting and wild camping. Well, folks, there you have it. Very easy, very effective, lightweight, easy to cook with. It's just a great do-it-yourself project that you can use anytime you go out in the woods. As always, folks, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.